waiting. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Jess has got me the first letter for this evening. I don't have a coffee, <laughs> but Travis has got me a coffee. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> yeah. I told my folks that I'd met the man that I think I'm going to marry. They were delighted, but not for long. <laughs> and the next other, next, can you take that? What's, uh, it's a bit of a slow opener, isn't it? Uh, please have a discussion on your show and talk about what the important things in life should be, like we don't each week anyway, Ronnie of Fitzroy. And the last letter tonight before we break for me to have a coffee and get the panellists in. What do I do to stop my wife brainwashing herself into more and more evil? Nothing. You send us a lo another letter and tell us what she's getting up to. All these letters, terrific lineup, coming up right now. And Jess is doing this, don't walk off. He's saying don't giggle. And I'm telling you to stand by and program's about to start now. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Well, I still haven't got my coffee. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour. I'll oh, stop your clapping now. It's too late. I still want my coffee. Let's introduce the panellists, see if they got a coffee before they came on. Bid, I'm allergic. welcome, sir. Thank You're you very much. I'm allergic to coffee. But anyway. You are allergic to coffee. I am. <laughs> You're also almost allergic to camera shots, too, because that was a very long time before they came to you. Um, are you really? How long have you been allergic to coffee? Well, since ever, I think. Did you yeah. ever have a coffee? I did, and uh, well, let's not talk about it because, you know. <laughs> I'd rather talk about that. Have you seen the first letter? Let's not bring it up, <laughs> so <laughs> to speak. <laughs> All right, so, well, I'm sad about that. I'll let, can I have Bid's coffee sent to me here, please? Thank you very much. Welcome to the show again. Thank you very sir. much. Terrific to have you here. Thank you. Claire, welcome back to WA. For all the way from Queensland. Are we allowed to call you a sex therapist? You can call me whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> But the line is, and whenever you like. <laughs> and whenever you like. All right. Welcome, mate. Yeah. No, it's great to be here. How long are you in WA for? Uh, I've got another week here. I've been here for two weeks, and I'll be back probably in November. You've got a little book there, I just noticed. I do, I do. You didn't Look, tell me about that before the show. We should have no, said. I didn't. I did. I just had it here. To, it's, it's a book I co-authored uh, three years ago, You Can Live the Life of Your Dreams. My chapter's... A chapter on female sexuality and intimacy. Oh, and speaking so, of experts, they're in. There we go. Hello, Carmen. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Have you got a chapter in this book as well? Uh, this is the first time I've laid eyes on it. What but about the book? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to lose an incredible amount of weight? Um, just really watching my diet and boot camp. Boot camp? Yeah, boot camp twice a week at 6 o'clock in the morning. How long did it take you? About a year. Are you going to write a book on that? I could. I know who'd read it. Mm. Me. Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take ten coffees. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. How are you, Manu Lucky? Very well. <laughs> Gary, nice how to are see you, mate? Oh, I'm good. Welcome I'm good. back. How's uh, the tourism industry? Tourism industry is great. We've got a premier who's the minister for tourism. So yeah, I know. In WA. Are, yeah. When was the last time we had a minister of tourism? Uh, who was Richard, the premier? Richard Court, 1995, 96. So wow, 20 years ago. Yeah. Was Richard Court that long ago? Yes. I'm getting old. <laughs> Bell Tower Times, wasn't it? Bell Tower yeah. Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bell Tower Times. Those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we have a bell tower in Perth, which is this big. Which should have been this big, but of course, Size political of fiasco, <laughs> and it became <laughs> this big. And then we voted him out. And but now we have a lovely uh, Elizabeth Key to um, wonderful Key. Sit back and wait to see the future development there on because it's got nothing on it at the moment. Yeah, it's still another eight years away till it's completely finished. Eight years away. We like to celebrate early in WA. <laughs> Speaking of celebrating, this one's called Love is Blind. Manny, you're first on this one. Hello, everyone. I told my folks that I'd met the man that I think I'm going to marry and they were delighted. I'm 29. I told them that he was tall, dark and handsome and he's all those things and more. On top of everything else, he's an academic. So he's smart too. He's also funny, considered, considerate, polite, gentle and strong. 
Well, Mum and Dad invited him over for dinner just to get to know him. My dad shook his hand and never uttered a single word again for the rest of the very short night. My mum acted like my boyfriend had leprosy. Nervous conversation all evening, never looked him in the eye and wore a fake smile all night. Yet my boyfriend remained charming all evening. My mum called me early the following morning and told me straight that she and my dad will not support any marriage to this man. And I asked why, as if I didn't know. And she told me straight that he may be all those wonderful things that I described, but at 68, he's five years older than my dad. I've told them I never want to have kids, so knowing that, what possible difference does it make whether he's 28, 38 or 68? We're in love and love is blind, so they say, is there any reason I've overlooked why I shouldn't be with this man? How much influence should parents have in these life choices anyway? And it comes to us from Kirsty of Netherlands in WA Manny. Kirsty, the line that you said, why shouldn't I be with this man? I'll give you two good reasons. In 10 years, you're going to be changing his pot pans, and in 20 <laughs> years, you're going to be visiting him in the old people's home. When you're at the peak of your beauty at 48, think very carefully about marrying a partner for a short period of time. Nothing wrong with the difference in age. Now. now you can be in love, etc. You might be a partner for five or ten years, but I'd, I'd seriously consider whether you want to marry him and whether you want to think that you're committing. Because once you've committed, That's you're it. changing those pot pans. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen, why does she have to get married? Why can't she just, like Manny said, you know, for five or ten years it'll probably be great, and then. Or is that just mercenary, where you just go, no, you're too old for me now, see you later? I, I don't see, it's just the beginning of the relationship, if that's what you want to call it. But I mean, why don't we just live each day and just like ride with it and go with it and like let fate run its course. Mm -hmm. and, and see what happens. Yeah, and like everyone calm down, no one's getting married, yeah. no one's like... Well, she oh. says she is. Well, does she? Yeah, oh, well, that yeah. might be a yeah. cultural thing at home, you know, you yeah. have to get married. Mm. I mean, You know, her mum and dad are d delighted, so much so that they, once they heard, they organised a dinner to meet him. I mean, if he's got, he's like, he's got all the great qualities and it's very hard to find, because I've been single for a while, a funny, polite, gent gentleman and like strong person that's also loyal. Um, if he's got all these great qualities, he, she could date someone more her age and she'd go through a worse track record. Mm -hmm. Does it ever work when there's a huge age difference like that? That's like 40 years. I think stay in the moment. Enjoy yeah. what you have with him right now. He's a wonderful man, moment. he's a great catch and age is irrelevant and what the question is here is uh, should your parents be, influ be an influence in your life on your choices well I it's up to you it's not yeah. anything to do with the parents you can take uh, it or not if you have five happy years with him isn't it better than having five miserable years with someone else so I think go for it he's um, making you happy and your happiness is more important than parents putting conditional love on you Bit. Have unconditional love with this lovely man. Final word. I want to put the contrary Don't. case. Love is the most important thing, but it's not the only thing. Couple of stats. It's not so much that this chap is uh, five years older than, the, uh, than your dad. It's that he's 39 years older than you. you. The average male life expectancy you. in Australia is a tick over 80. So statistically, I'm sorry, your boyfriend has, is going to see another 12 summers. You, on the other hand, uh, Kirsty, are likely to have 56 summers ahead of you because women live a little a bit longer. That means probably you'll be alone without this particular partner for nearly 45 years. So think about it, please. Think about it. I would say it's a strategic thing. She could have been looking for someone that's rich and waiting for Maybe he's rich. To, so it could have been a strategic Maybe we're missing that. Maybe he's rich. When we come back, again, we're going to be talking about whether rich is one of the more important things in life. What are the important things in life? When we come back, <laughs> don't go away. Is rich important? No. no. Yes, it no. is, but rich it's in rich, life, rich in, rich life, in rich people, in love, rich, in effort, rich in relationships, rich in... Rich in, rich in yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting in touch with Sweet and Sour is easy. Just head to sweetandsour.net.au to send us a letter. And while you're there, why not check out past episodes? Plus, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And for a behind-the-scenes look at Sweet and Sour, check us out on Instagram. And for every letter that is sent in and we discuss, we're going to send you to the movies courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. And there's the movie on your screen right now, Eye in the Sky. And that is the last movie of Alan 
Rickman. Is that right, Bid? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. worth seeing if for no other reason than that. Dear Mitch and guests, please have a discussion on your show and talk about what the important things in life should be. So there's the question, folks. My man and I watch the show most weeks, so we are both going to be listening to see if you discuss our letter. It's an important topic because there are so many directions individuals and couples can head in, especially when you're young. What made us write to you is that we fight all the time about so much. I want to travel a lot while we, we're young. He wants to save and get a good foundation. I want to eat healthy, real food, and he says everything is good and everything is bad, and he has three sugars in his coffee. He wants to get married, and I'm just happy to be together. He wants us both to continue studying after graduation so we can have better careers. I'm more inclined to want to get out and into my own business so we can fund our travel and lifestyle. Please let's hear from you guys on what are the important things. Please, Ronnie of Fitzroy in Victoria. Bid straight to you, sir. What are well, the important things in life to Ronnie, you? Ronnie, I can't tell you what should be important in your life because um, part of life is figuring out what, what is important to you. I can tell you what works for me. It's pretty simple. Four things. Peace, balance, a sense of humour and acceptance of something greater than oneself. You can call it God, you can call it whatever you like. So internal peace, external peace, peace in your relationships, because I think peace the, the quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. Uh, internal peace, because uh, an internal compass, your integrity is everything. Malcolm X said, a, a, a person who doesn't stand for something will fall for anything. Uh, balance in all things, balance between work and play, between ambition and acceptance, between salad and chocolate, between whatever. A sense of humour because no one gets out alive, so we might as well enjoy it. And uh, acceptance of something greater. I like the idea that the great mystery is with us from creation to cataclysm. That works for me. Fantastic. Claire, mm. what's important to you? Well, well, uh, values, definitely. If uh, What seems to be missing here is the values don't seem to be quite aligned. Mm. The relationship's lifestyle is mismatched. You might have other things in common, maybe. Maybe it's around the physical and the sexuality part. Uh, that might be in the OK zone. But the actual lifestyle, from what you're saying here, is just it's mismatched. Aligned. It's not aligned at mm. all. Mm. And you both are wanting different things. You're going different ways. If you can, in your relationship, try and work out and see if you can come to a compromise and work it out somewhere and make it work, that would be great. Otherwise, all I can say for you, if your values aren't aligned and you're really thinking of marriage, is that, are you thinking of marriage? Did that yeah, come up? Yeah, you're thinking yeah. of he marriage. He wants to get married, she doesn't. She you want to get married. He, you know, you, you haven't got anything lining up. So I just think, you know, you've got, you've got yourself a catch and maybe you've got to throw this catch back in the ocean and go and wait for the dolphin to come in. Maybe that's the way to do it. Maybe. I don't know. But it is a mismatch. It's a mismatch in the relationship lifestyle. Do you know, so um, have a look it's at funny that. you say relationship because I saw a TED talk last week on a study that's been going for longer than 75 years. Mm. Men only, they started all those years ago, and some of the people who are still alive are in their 90s now. Mm. And it was lifestyle, health, what contributed to longevity and well-being. Yep. And they said the people who weren't necessarily healthy, who weren't necessarily rich, but who had the best relationships were the people who lasted the longest mm. on this planet. Isn't yes. that amazing? Yeah. Relationships yes. are important. Definitely. Come on, come. I think basically she, um, that partner is going through the processes. Like it's like, we're going to get married, we've got to go and study, we're going to do together. this, blah, blah, blah. But I think what they need to sit down is either go and do some relationship counselling if they want to go down that way. But what's that program on? And I'm just, I've had it, it's called, is it Seven Year Switch? I think. Oh, well, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. they should go on that. <laughs> and just do the switch. And then that way they'll work it out. That will sort it all out. Appreciate national TV. But they are sorting it out. It's normal to sort it all out yeah. and see what your you know, values are at this point in time. You want to do this, he wants to do that. If it doesn't work in the end, you can't sort it out. See you later. Yeah. Manny. My, uh, Ronnie, my father gave me a conversation, I think I was about 17, and he said, there's going to be four things in your life that will dictate happiness. And I said, what are they, Dad? He said, your sex life, <laughs> your profession or your business, your family life, and your spirituality or religion. Mm. And he said, all your life, if you can get two or three of those out of four at a peak, you're doing exceptionally well. The second bit of advice he said was, 
uh, find your life partner has to have the same values in those four areas. And if you can find someone that has those values and that same way of life, you'll be happy. Now, Ronnie, you might find it here, like uh, Mitch said, it's a case of talking, discussion, negotiation. But uh, the important things in life, sex, profession, business, family life, and your, and your religion, or your spiritual life. My dad always said, you can always judge a bloke by the woman he chooses. When we come back, yes. we're going to be talking about <laughs> devil worship, <laughs> devil in drag, <laughs> devil in heels. Don't go away. More of Sweet and Sound when we come back. Witchcraft. <laughs> Woo! Baby, come and talk sweet and sour to me. It's time for sweet and sour. Yeah. 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 Sweet and sour. Here we go. The letter three, the final one for the evening. Dear panelists, what do I do to stop my wife brainwashing herself into more and more evil? We married four years ago with a normal church wedding. But when she smashed a mirror two years ago, her superstitious side took hold and she's turned to the dark side. Basically, she went on the internet to find an answer to stop the seven years bad luck and she stumbled into a, a devil worship site. Frankly, I'm not overly religious and I think most religions are kooky and controlling, even these devil worship sites. Um, let's face it, the, the devil's just another deity worshipped by committed people for better or worse and as far as I'm concerned it's for worse we have strange herbs stinking and hanging all over the flat she recites silly lines too many times a day at meal times in the loo and just worse and worse just before we have sex each and every time she's well and truly forgotten about her broken mirror but she's so into this spooky crap it's unbearable I'm writing because she's now casting spells to fall pregnant how do others cope when their partners turn into religious nuts? How paranoid should I be about this devil worship stuff? Should I let it go or do you think it's harmful in the long run? I just don't know what to do, um, but I do know I don't want any of my kids uh, that we may have to be influenced by this stuff. And it comes to us from Ray of Nolamara in WA, Carmen. Um, first question I have to ask is, does she actually wear Prada? Does she wear Prada? <laughs> Smarty. Well, that's what Devil wears to. Prada. Yes, no, honestly, um, I think she's got some OCD tendencies and she actually needs, she sounds mentally She unhinged. does, if she's saying these prayers or but incantations. You've, you've got to remember there's two sides to every story and he could be have exaggerating a little bit, so we don't really As know. As he sees it, though. But from, I just think regardless, if he wants to stay in this relationship, I'd be walking away, but if he wants to stay there, um, maybe some relationship counselling. Relationship counselling with a professional, and the professional will be is able to work it out. Is that because you don't like you, you, look all this witchcraft stuff and whatever? I, I, it's gobbledygook. It, but lots of them are gobbledygook and whatever. As long as you're not harming anybody, I, you know I don't know. I, you know I don't know anything about this witchcraft stuff. And you know some people wanted to tell me it's all about nature and whatever. I don't know. But mm -hmm. if it's really impacting your head and holding you back from doing things, it's dangerous. Manny. Um, Ray, I don't know about the witchcraft and what your letter doesn't point out is whether she has actually joined a, uh, what do you call cult, it? Cult, cult or yes. coven? Or she's just uh, researching on the internet and grabbing out spells and uh, doing that. Not that that would make a difference, um, but at the end of the day, you've answered your own question. If you don't want your children influenced by this sort of stuff, then you've got no choice but to bail out. Um, I don't understand the witch side. There's a dark side. There's a white witches and dark witches and stuff. But all oh, I know, you know more than me. Yeah. Well, all I know is at the end of the day, if you believe that there's a white side, then there's definitely a dark side. And uh, and I think there probably is a dark side, and it scares the shits out of me because I've had <laughs> a couple of on yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you, you need to you need to educate yourself what's going on here. But at the end of the day, you've answered your question. If you don't want your children to be influenced by this stuff, then it's time to bail. It's time. It's time to bail. Mm -hmm. A bid. Um, how much more dangerous is this stuff than a lot of those other religions as well? well I, I think 
Ray, you've, you've said it all in your first sentence. If mm. you genuinely believe that your wife is brainwashing herself into evil, then it's a no-brainer. It's not okay. It's, it's dumb. It's destructive. It's downright dangerous. Mm. And to answer your question, I mean, who knows? He's talking about evil. No, he's not talking about good witches. And mm. He's talking about the, the dark side. And I can only go on what he's, what he's told us. Yeah. How can you voluntarily, how can voluntarily choosing the darkness, the worst in the world, this world and beyond, yeah. ever be a good thing? So mm -hmm. I reckon urge your wife to get real or get out if you're, if you're serious about that. Um, because I think evil lurks everywhere. I don't personally believe in the, the devil as a single discrete deity, but there is evil in the world. It's, it's beyond question and it'll cross your path. You don't have to go looking for it. Claire, mm -hmm. final, final yes, word on this. Yes, I, I agree, Bid, with a, a lot of things you're saying there. And I also look at the way you're talking about the black and the white. Everything has a dark side and a light side, we all do. And uh, as long as you're working towards the greater good for others and you're not harming anyone else and you're doing something for yourself to improve yourself. Now, if, it's, if it is about uh, working more with the dark side, it's not improving yourself. Uh, if you are working towards the superstition of breaking the mirror, why don't you just cleanse your house and put some sage around or something? Or, or you know, what they do say if you do break a mirror, but it's probably too late for you, you bury it or something and, and get rid of it. Mm. Uh, but to hold on to it, you're holding on to it, so you're creating more negativity in your house. So you're going to have seven years of more bad luck if you're going to keep focusing on the darkness of it, go into the light, go and find another nice way and sage, sing mantras if you have to, or, or another nice, um, uh, you know, spiritual aspect. There's plenty of them to do. What Look that up on the internet. What we didn't do <laughs> is we, we didn't define what evil is and it's too late to go into it. But do you like this letter to give away the pair of limited edition sunnies courtesy of Elon Treves and Aussie Opticals or do you like another one? Oh. Oh. oh, Claire's going to think um, about it. Bid, which letter do you like? I look, like uh, look. Sorry. <laughs> my fault. My I like fault. I introduced I you like both. Letter two. You like letter two. You like letter two. The important things in life. What does Claire like? Look, I'm going to go for letter two as well because the important things in life is important. Important. <laughs> okay, let's see what this side of the panel says. Well, yeah, obviously they're, they're very sunny um, all the time. So yeah, some sunglasses would do. Take Who's it. very sunny? Well, they're all like one, ha happy, healthy. Who friends. is? So you haven't told me which letter you like. Number two. Oh, number oh, yeah, two. Sorry, sorry, number sorry. Number two. You're supposed to be Manny, my reader. which letter do you like? <laughs> number two. Number two. Wow, looks like it's number it's pretty, two. Pretty <laughs> unanimous, <laughs> isn't it? Coming out to Ronnie of Fitzroy of Victoria. Please have a discussion on your show and talk about the important things in life. And they're watching. Say goodnight to Ronnie, everybody. Good night, Ronnie, good, everybody. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, Bid. Good night, Ron. Good night, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you, Ronnie. Good night, Claire. Well Thank you for being night. with us. Yes. Yes. Now, if we, if we can, we might get you back next week before you disappear back to the East Coast Fantastic. of Australia. Yep. If okay. not, well, it's been wonderful for you to come back and visit us. It's lovely to Terrific be here. to have you here. <laughs> good night, Carmen. Good night. You're going to sing for us one night when you come on. Do you know Bizet's Carmen? Uh, no. <laughs> and you probably don't want me to because I'm tone deaf. <laughs> I went and saw it at His Majesty's once. Manny, can you sing Bizet's Carmen? Uh, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> we chant in the choir at Easter, you don't want We do, <laughs> we do. We're, we're Easter singers. But we just go for the eggs, really. <laughs> Never mind. We've got to disappear. Thank you for having us at home tonight, Australia. Thank all of our wonderful panellists and thanks to our terrific crew. We've got to go. Good night, everybody. Good night. This is the part where you wave. <laughs> and, and it disappears right about now. And we should have a new sting at the end of it as well because we're no longer the Central Institute of wherever we are. We're now back to being TAFE. So have a look just there. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah? and yeah, see the music yeah. coming on? Watch this. This is our new sting, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time, courtesy of Colin Lutter, our sting. <laughs>